Hello, everybody. Wednesday lesson of the day continues on Thursdays. Today we had two common themes that I wanted to review. One of them is pores on the face, and the other one is uh, about looking age appropriate or how much long younger you're gonna look when you do a facelift or something like that. We'll start with pores. So pores, uh, they exist from when you're born and you have them in different patterns in different areas on the face and it's uh, its own little kind of micro world of pores that most people uh, haven't really looked into but it's kind of like constellations where you look into outer space and there's constellations uh, of different patterns you see the same thing in the face and if you look on uh, someone's face really up close you'll see that the pore pattern is pretty consistent from person to person where you see them uh, what you see in the under eyes and above the eyes is not pores, it's more little tiny sebaceous glands that have tinier openings, but because it's thin skin, you can see the sebaceous glands right under the skin. Similar to the eye, you see them over here when you get on the lateral part of the lip, and if you go onto the red part of the lip, we call those fortis spots, even though they're just pores under the, the, the mucosa. Here on the face, you'll see anteriorly is where most people have issues with enlarging of pores over time. And the pores are just where uh, you put out sebum or sweat. Uh, they come out of the sebaceous glands and they're attached there. So there's apocrine glands that are attached to the skin. There are little appendages that go from the skin and vaginate into the dermis and uh, come back up. So they're actually part of the dermis, but they open up into the epidermis and um, well, they go through both levels. If you look out to the side of somebody's face, you'll always see a patch of pores over here under the zygomaticus muscle. So this is your zygomaticus muscle complex right here. And then right under it, you can see a set of pores that go over McGregor's patch. Uh, most surgeons don't know that, but there's a set of pores that are right there as well. And then when you go to the forehead, you have just a variable amount, usually in the pattern of the corrugators and proceres, and then less so on the rest of the head. On the nose, you see the other area where you get a bunch of pores, and that varies from person to person depending on the kind of bacteria on their face and if it causes thickening of the sebaceous glands over time. So the other pores are the ones really that we're trying to treat most of the time are here and here. Treating pores is very difficult, but there are some really good treatments. The number one treatment of all time that people have used year after year is Retin-A. Retin-A is a vitamin A derivative that increases the turnover of skin, so it sheds your skin faster instead of 28 days, like three days. And you could use that once every three or four days at a low concentration of like 0.025 or 0.05. It doesn't matter if you go to 0.1, it doesn't need to go that high. And you just make sure you moisturize the skin because it's drying to keep shedding the skin all the time. The other is Definage. Definage is a cream that is meant to go redirect the stem cells at the base of the hair follicle uh, called defensins, the molecules, and have them produce skin instead of hair. And that works as well for reducing pore size. The other creams that you buy over the counter and uh, cost $100, $500, $300, whatever they are, don't really work, or I've never seen one work exceptionally well. The other really cool uh, treatment that we've been using recently is called Matrix Radio Frequency or Matrix Profound. It is not the old profound that we use for skin tightening. It's actually more for superficial or medium depth stuff where we can treat the pores, malar edema or the malar bags that are on the side of your eye and various areas of the skin. And I've seen some impressive results from this so far. I posted one the other day, uh, possibly I can post it again over here let's see if we can take a look at this thing where are we pores okay here we go so these are the pores that we saw the other day you can see from the before photo uh, there are pores over here that are enlarged on that anterior cheek distribution which is the most common and afterwards even after one treatment they look smaller and more subtle they don't go away they always just look smaller more subtle so let's see, how do we get rid of this photo? Stop sharing, fantastic, back to this. So that's uh, the radio frequency treatment called Matrix, which is low downtime, very easy to do, uh, just has a little bit of pain and a little bit of redness for a few days, but not too bad. Now to the comments I got today about, uh, I don't wanna look crazy. I don't wanna look pulled, I don't wanna look stretched. It's in that realm, but the answer, the, the question really was, um, or the concern was, I don't want to look like I'm trying too hard. So you don't want to be 
the person who is 70 years old and they look like they're trying to look 40. You want to be the 70 year old who looks 50. That's fantastic. But you don't want to look like you're trying to look 20. Like you're trying too hard to look 30. Trying too hard to look 40. It doesn't look good. Um, it really is made mainly because it looks fake, but it just looks like you're trying too hard. and You want things to look natural and not noticeable to people. And the question was, why does that happen? And part of it is because, yeah, they are trying too hard, but it's because they went to the surgeon who accepted them trying too hard or the surgeon who doesn't do a great job at making people look natural. And then it looks like you're just overdoing everything because the surgeon doesn't have good taste. So overdoing fat grafting is a very common one. And that's when the cheeks look all full when you smile or your head gets bigger over time. Too much fat grafting. It's better to do very small, subtle amounts. And you could look pulled, stretched, or overly tightened. And it's because the surgeon who's lifting you is pulling, stretching, and over tightening or tightening. Uh, lifting doesn't require any of that. When you do a proper face and neck lift, the, uh, the way that you should do it is by releasing the tissues and repositioning them without pulling, stretching, tightening, because pulling, stretching, tightening will make you look pulled, stretched, and tightened. So that's not a good thing. Uh, how much should a f younger should a facelift make you look is another question I got today. Or they say, I'm going to look 20 years younger, 10 years younger, 20% better, 10% 10, 10 better. And I tell them, I have no answer for you. I don't know. I don't, uh, I can't give it a number. All I know is that when I do these surgeries, some people look way more refreshed. Some people look like they lost weight. Some people look more defined and others look younger and they could look a little younger or they could look a lot younger. And uh, the important part is that it looks always age appropriate, which means you don't look like necessarily a 70 year old looking 70 you could be a 70 year old looking 50 but you're not trying to look like you're 20. Uh, so it's not that you tried that got you there it's that you went to the wrong surgeon so when you go to the right surgeon you can want to look 20 all you want you will always just look age appropriate which means you look like nothing was altered about you and that you just aged well or that you look great for your age or you look better for a 70 year old than any other person who's 70. So that's the way you want to do surgery. And the way you do that is not by asking the surgeon not to do something to you, not to make you look fake, not to make you look pulled. That doesn't work. It's by finding the surgeon who never does that and who just gets natural results and respects the anatomy of the face. When you respect the anatomy of the face, like respecting wood, curb your enthusiasm, you treat it differently. If you respect the face and you respect the anatomy of the face, you don't want it to change too much. So when you go in and do these procedures, you're trying to keep things anatomically correct. And if you keep things anatomically correct, meaning you put them back where they came from, then outside you look natural. So beautiful inside, beautiful outside, natural inside, natural outside. So if you go back into a surgery that you had done and you're 10 years later, you go back in and you don't need a map, everything is where it's supposed to be, that person looks natural and they're gonna age naturally. And if you do the surgery and you, again, lift and reposition things, you don't cause problems, you don't alter their aging, they don't have weird little things that show up or stigmata or signs of facial plastic surgery over time. They just look natural the entire time. Uh, so as far as how young you're gonna look after a facelift, I don't know. I can't control that. I just do the best job possible and you will look younger and fresher. That's what everybody looks like. They look more fresh. They look younger, they don't look like, a uh, look like a different person. And it's not because I made a small change. It's not because I didn't try enough. It's not because I tried too hard. It's because I did the maximum I could do that was the most appropriate. I got the biggest improvement I can get, but I did it in a natural way. So they end up looking normal, nobody can tell. And they didn't need to ask me not to do mo uh, more or to do more. It makes no difference. I do the best I can no matter what. So this isn't about more or less. It's about doing things appropriately and as much as you can for anybody because it is something where there is no such thing as too much of a good thing. You can have lots of lots of good. What you don't want is bad things that accumulate. So you don't want to keep doing one bad thing and another bad thing and another bad thing. You have all these bad plastic surgeries that cumulatively make you look terrible. So let's look at the question. Hola, me, uh, me hicieron muy mal un blefroplastia y estoy muy triste, mis ojos no se ven Uh, bien, bueno, pues tienes que ver un especialista de ojos donde vives para revisar y ver si hay algo que puedes cambiar. Um, so if you do RF treatment profound first, can you get a facelift years later? The answer to that is yes. And I actually demonstrated this uh, the other day in the operating room. I was operating on the best looking actor guy you'll ever see. And I'd done profound on him uh, probably a year and a half ago. 
when I went back in there and did the dissection, I showed them that it just dissects beautifully. There is no substantial scarring evident. There is no adhesion. This mass plane is still perfect. And the reason for this is that it's a really controlled radio frequency. Uh, if you do it repeatedly or too many passes, yeah, you can cause damage. But if you do it once and you do it properly or twice and you do it properly, you don't see those things that you used to see with Althera and the other treatments that microwave and shrink the SMAS layer and deflate it. Uh, so Profound is probably the safest treatment of the main treatments. Have you heard of the Jet Peel? I have not heard of the Jet Peel, but I'm sure it's fantastic. Lasers are not good for Hispanic brown skin. In general, that's correct. Lasers are not great on darker skin types. Um, most people who get lasers don't need lasers. They think that it's a healthy thing to do on all skin types, like applying a vitamin, and that's not true. Lasers are meant to reverse damage by causing damage. So if you don't have damage, don't cause damage with a laser. Lasers are beautiful for fixing things that are wrong. If there's nothing wrong, don't do it for prevention or anything like that. Stick to the more benign treatments that don't damage you to make you better, that they just make you better. PRP, microneedling, things like that that are fairly harmless, that's that's the way to go. Uh, Sam Borna, you're the greatest. Lo que necesito algo para mi melasma, pues para melasma hay mil cosas que puedes hacer. Uno es uh, inyecciones de tranexamico, so tranexamic acid, uh, funciona a veces o tal vez puedes usar uh, las cremas para hacer uh, la piel más brillante. So do you recommend peel then laser? Uh, you could always, but doesn't matter. Is there any other way to do lower face and neck lift that would not last as long but would be a cheaper version? Uh, yes, there are many ones but they scar more and don't look fantastic and the cheaper or more expensive doesn't really depend on doing less or more, it depends on the surgeon. You can get a cheap surgeon who does amazing work and you can get a very expensive surgeon that does terrible work. Uh, so it's more finding the affordable surgeon for that does really, really good work and get a big result out of it. So is there a lower facelift that does not have a lot of downtime? Uh, there's the weekend lift, which is just for internal neck tightening, but doesn't do lower face necessarily. So it's just neck. Uh, what else do we have here? Are you and Dara Liotta the same age? Uh, roughly. Dara was my chief, and I think she was two years above me. And she's an incredible, amazing person. And she's in New York, and she's the one who inspired me to go into plastics, and she didn't even know it. If you did a deep plane 15 years ago, how would it look if you got a second facelift? If it's a well done deep plane, a second facelift just makes it look better. If it's a poorly done deep plane and you do a good one on the second one, it'll still make it look better. So it's totally fine to do uh, a deep plane. It is a uh, complete myth that you can't do a deep plane twice. Uh, the deep plane is a virgin plane no matter what because it is a glide plane, not no matter what. If you tether it with a million sutures and you do terrible surgery, then it's never virgin again. Um, and you can't be a born again virgin in this case. So with uh, deep plane lifts, whether the first one was a smash, the second one can be a deep plane. The first one was a deep plane, the second one can be a deep plane. The reason for this is the deep plane gets into the natural glide plane of the face, which is that. And when you get in there, it's a glide plane, so there are no natural attachments. There are no adhesions on the mobile part of it, only the lateral portions and tethering points. So you can do a deep plane and should do a deep plane as the revision. A SMAS plication surgery is uh, not fantastic. It is not a logical surgery. It is one that we did because we were modifying a bad surgery to begin with, which was skin elevation and skin pull. And to make it less terrible, they pulled the SMAS layer with it. It doesn't mean it was the appropriate way to lift a face or to fix the problem that they're having. It's just putting a Band-Aid on someone shitting on your head. So um, not the proper uh, solution, but we figured that out years down the line. And uh, we do deep plane now, which is more mobilization of this soft tissue glide plane, which works a lot better. Um, I just did my two months. We're having a fantastic, fantastic. Where am I at? I am in my photo booth at the office. Is there a difference between deep plane lift and extended deep plane, or is there smoke and mirrors to charge more? Uh, there, 
the extended deep plane, these are based on descriptions that started with Sam Hammer being the deep plane lift, and then somebody made an extended version, and someone made a modified extended version, which means that they went up this way and forward, and the other one went down this way to release this. So that's your modified extended uh, deep plane lift. So there is a difference in the nomenclature, however, uh, somebody who does a deep plane can call it deep plane and really do an extended. So like mine is a vertical vector modified extended deep plane facelift is the aura lift, but I don't call it that, I just call it a lift or a deep plane lift. What age is best to have a lift? No, there's no best age, it's a mechanical thing. You do it when you need to and don't do it before then because it's not preventative. I'm 35 and want to lift, is that okay? It depends on your face. So same answer uh, that I just gave is that it really just depends on the mechanicals. If you really, really need it and can't get away with doing anything else, then the age doesn't matter. But if you can get away by using radio frequency, then uh, you're much better off than being operated on. Operating has a lot of healing time, so you do it when you really want to dedicate yourself to that. All right. Lifestyle like food and genetics, but also Asian does have, I don't know what that says, but thank you. I want to look super tight. That's not a good thing. Uh, do you do young patients that just want to look like Kendall Jenner? Everybody wants to look like Kendall Jenner. Under eye bags, not filler, what else do we have? All right, well, I think we went through a bunch of this stuff, a bunch of these questions. Fantastic. And I think we got all of it. Address skin tags. Skin tags are pretty simple. Most skin tags, you just trim them off. Uh, other ones um, are warts or moles, or there's a bunch of other things that people think are skin tags but are not uh, skin tags. All right, I think we got through most of the questions. Tell us your skincare routine. This is a good one. So skincare routine. I shower in the morning, every morning. That's when I do my like meditation and idea creation is usually in the shower, so it takes a while. And I shampoo my hair really quickly. I use like a men's head and shoulders and it like falls on my face and that's about it. So that's my skincare routine. I don't, uh, I don't really do much. The less I traumatize my face, the better off I am. My skin's pretty sensitive to cleansers and things like that. So I can't really put much on it. Same with sunblock. Uh, so that's all. All right, I'm gonna post this if anybody's interested in watching it later, and I hope you all have a lovely Thursday.